Hi everyone, I'm Lawrence Yu and in this video I'm going to talk about all Final Fantasy games for the Sony PlayStation 2. Final Fantasy X and X2 got in the Legendary Games category, being awesome even after almost 20 years of their first release. First of all, the graphics look amazing. Even for today's standards, the graphics remain pretty good. You can see that they aged, but they are still pleasant to look at. And the whole game is beautiful, from start to finish. You even have some underwater levels that I found to be the most beautiful out of the games. In Rust, the gameplay formula is the same as in the other games, meaning that the games are RPGs. The story element is very prominent, having long spurs of storytelling. In Rust in gameplay you get sandbox gameplay and turn-based combat that is improved from past Final Fantasy iterations by making the combat more fast-paced. It's still turn-based, but you you get to do the action mo more it's more fast paced i'm not getting into the tweaks as i want to be brief but just know that they made the turn based action more fast paced and it's more intuitive too As for Final Fantasy XI, XI Rise of the Xylert, Chains of Promethea, Seekers of Adwin, Treasures of Art Urgan, and Wings of the Goddess, they are online MMOs, so I can't review them as I didn't play them when the servers were still up, and now the servers are down for these games. And even if I could read some reviews and tell you about the games from what I've read, it wouldn't be useful to you, as the servers are now down and you can't play the games anymore. And since the majority of the audience is here to just look for games to play, I decided not to review each game in particular of the MMO category. But just know this fun fact, if you wanted to play the games back in the day, you needed an expensive hard drive, a network adapter, you needed to buy the game obviously, and you needed to pay a monthly subscription to be able to play the game. So it was a lot of hassle for the games to run and play them even back in the day. But a game you can play offline is Final Fantasy XII. This one makes the turn-based stuff even more instant, meaning that this one isn't actually turn-based, it has an active time battle system, meaning that you can see encounters right away, and even the small creatures appear on the map. And you can avoid them if you want, so you can avoid encounters, unlike the original Final Fantasy games where you went on a patch of grass and got an enemy encounter, you just got into a battle. Here you see the enemy in time, in front of you, and you can avoid it if you want. Also you get the Gambit system, where you can program your character how to respond in certain situations. That way you don't have to repeat the same attack over and over again, but the game does it for you. And even if it sounds good, you will inevitably feel at some points that the game is kind of playing by itself with the Gambit system as the games just the game just reacts for you, but only for a few occasions, as the many different enemies you encounter will force you to constantly switch strategies, so you are still into the game. It, it isn't actually playing by itself, but I do admit that at some points, for the small fry enemies, the game is kind of playing by itself. In Rust, it's incredibly dense, and the graphics are amazing. It's a game I recommend you play. By the huge amount of content and great gameplay and great visuals, this one certainly is a game to recommend. Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII doesn't abide to the classic formula. It's not a turn-based game, but a third-person shooter. And it's pretty basic from here. You will have to kill everything that moves and Occasionally, you will have to protect civilians or disarm hidden mines. You can also use magic and limit breakers. It's a decent third-person shooter, 
but hardcore Final Fantasy fans might not like the game as it, it doesn't abide to the classic formula. I mean, it's incredibly different from what the franchise got to be known for. But I had fun in the game. Mindless shooting is okay too. I mean, it worked out. It was generic, not as vast and full of content and story rich like the usual Final Fantasy game, but I can't deny that I had fun in the game. Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy in Yatadaki Street Special is similar to Monopoly, but much, much tougher. Your goal is to improve the houses you buy and finish with the highest amount of money, and it's not as easy as it sounds. You can get bankrupt easily, and one dice roll can ruin your life. And don't think of the game as a simple arcade game. The game has multiple difficult stages and boards, so this game is a long one. But it's a fun one too. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, click the join button and choose one of the perks. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. I've left the links to those in the video description. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching!